In this video, we're going to have a look at the discriminant test and what that means and how it relates to quadratic equations. So I have three examples here and we're going to find the discriminant value of each of these quadratic equations. Now the discriminant is noted by this little triangle. This is the symbol for the discriminant and it is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now the a, b and c in this formula relate to the three coefficients of our quadratic. So our quadratic will have an ax squared plus bx plus c general form. So let's, for our first question, let's label what our a, b and c are. a is the, always the coefficient of x squared, which will be 1 for this one. b will be the coefficient of x, which is negative 2 and c will be our constant negative 8. Now if we use our discriminant formula, the discriminant of our quadratic will be b squared, so it's going to be b which is negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c which is negative 8. So our discriminant will be 4 minus and then we're going to have 4 times 1 times negative 8 and the negative, negative and the negative will actually become a positive, and 4 times 8 is 32. Now, if our discriminant is 36, what does that mean? Well, the value of 36, it does have a meaning, but it's not super important right now. What we're looking at is if this number is a positive number, 0, or a negative number. Now, 36 is clearly a positive number. This is a pos positive number. And what that tells us, if the discriminant is a positive number, it means that our original quadratic equation will have two roots, two real roots. So therefore, two real, and sometimes in the IB they actually say distinct, distinct roots. Now a root is a solution for x if we if we make the y equal 0, another way of saying that is it's an x-intercept. So if I were to graph what our original equation looks like, it means that we will have two x-intercepts. So if we wanted to find uh, when y is 0, which is an x-intercept, we will get two values. So that's what two real roots means. And if we actually just factorized this quadratic, we could actually find out that it is x minus 4 and x plus 2, which means our, our roots would be at negative 2 and 4. So we're going to have a quadratic that looks a little bit like this, just a rough sketch. And we have two, I'll well, draw my big red dots here, two distinct real roots, and roots just means x-intercepts. Okay, so that's what the discriminant test does. It tells us straight away, without even solving the equation or factorizing the equation, it tells us how many roots that our equation will have. Okay, let's have a look at the second example. If we have our a is 1, our b is negative 4, and our c is 4, if we apply our discriminant test, so negative 4 is our b squared minus 4 times a times c, our discriminant will be 16 minus, and then this will be 16, so our discriminant will be equal to 0. Now that's interesting, that's one of the three possibilities. It's either going to be a positive number, zero, or a negative number. And if our discriminant comes out as zero, so zero, this tells us that we have one real root. So we have one real root, and in the IB, they sometimes try and trick you here by saying two equal roots. So two equal roots is actually the same as one root. It means we do have two roots, but they are the same. So it's actually just one root. And what these types of equations look like, where we have one real root or two equal roots, is our quadratic will actually bottom out on the x-axis. So our original equation here will actually be a quadratic that looks like this, where there's only one x-intercept, there's only one solution for x if we want to make y equal 0. So if the discriminant comes out as 0, it means we have one real root, or we can say two equal roots. And oh, you may see this, this might confuse you, but actually this equation here is a perfect square. 
this can be factorized to x minus 2 squared. And if you have a perfect square, they always have one real root. Okay, the last one, if we do the discriminants, so a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 10. Our discriminant will be b squared minus 4 times a times c. So our discriminant will be 4 minus 40. So our discriminant will be negative 36. Now the number 36 isn't super important. The, the fact that it's a negative is, so we can say this is a negative number. And if we have a negative discriminant, it means we have, you could probably try and guess if, the, if it was two real roots, then one real root, one real root, we're going to have no real roots or zero real roots. And what these quadratics look like, they do exist, but it just means that it's going to be somewhere above the x-axis. There will be no x-intercepts. Okay, so in the IB math exams, uh, more often than not, there's going to be maybe some k's in here. They're not going to give you the a, b, and c uh, as numbers. There might be some, some variables in there, but they will tell you some interesting information about the question. They'll say that even though there's a k or a b or a q in here, they might say that our quadratic does have two real distinct roots. You need to use the light bulb in your head. You'll think, oh, two real roots. That means the discriminant must be positive. So you'll use the discriminant test and you'll make our discriminant be greater than zero because that means positive. And that's how you'll start solving the question. Now, if the question said our, our equation has one real root, we know that the discriminant will equal zero and we'll try and solve it that way. Or, or this last example here where they might say there's no real roots. So this is how we this is how we approach the question. The questions might get a bit tricky with these k's, but I encourage you to practice a few and, and watch the videos. But this is what the discriminant test does. Uh, it tells you how many roots there are in an equation. And in IB exams, you might need to work backwards from the information they gave you. Okay, good luck.